Hello friends, Coolio here and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to share with you my experience playing a relatively new mobile action RPG game called Punishing Grey Raven. Now the game officially launched in China back in December of 2019, however I didn't get around to making the video at the time, but seeing as the game is currently running a new in-game event, I thought this would be a great time to dive in and check it out. So if you guys enjoy the video, a like would be appreciated. And if you are new here, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification button to stay up to date in the latest in mobile gaming. So Punishing Grey Raven is currently only available in China and in order to access the game, you have to bypass their Chinese ID verification system. However, there are ways to kind of easily get past the system and honestly with a quick Google search, I was able to hop into the game and start playing. Now, the game is currently only in Chinese, however, I actually found the game's tutorial to be pretty simple and straight to the point and visually explains all of the basic systems you need in order to play. So in terms of like how difficult it is to actually play the game without knowing the language, I found it to be on the easier side when it came to things such as the gameplay and the action and combat. However, maneuvering the interface is a bit of a hit or miss due to it not relying on using things such as icons or images, but rather the Chinese characters. Now the premise of the game centers around humanity fighting back against a viral outbreak that not only kills humans but also infects machines, commanding them to destroy anything in their path. Now you take on the role of an elite squad of heroes known as Grey Raven. You will collect heroes by playing through the main campaign, participating in game events, and you will even be able to collect them through a gotcha system which I'll talk about a little bit more at the end of the video. Now you can further customize your heroes with different weapons, which do have a visual difference when you equip them, which is an important thing for me. The game has a card equipment system, which is fairly similar to other gacha games in which you can combine cards of the same type to unlock more powerful buffs and stat bonuses. Now, as you guys know, I absolutely love it when there is a visual progression to your characters as you upgrade them. Now, the game has a tiered costume system where you can unlock cooler looking costumes as you upgrade your characters and you can also buy different styles of costumes from the in-game store or even unlock them through the in-game events. Now I'm sure you guys want me to talk about the actual gameplay, which at first does look incredibly similar to other mobile ARPGs, but I feel it has a few key differences that not only make it really easy to pick up new heroes and jump straight into the action, but also allows for a more on-the-go experience with shorter gameplay action and a quick character progression. Now each character in the game has a basic attack combo and a dodge function, but as you start to attack enemies, different colored icons will begin to appear with each icon representing a type of skill that you can use. Now activating more than one icon next to each other will unleash a more powerful version of that ability. As well, your character can utilize a variety of different combos between the skills, the attack button, and the dodge button when you press them in the correct order. Now one thing I found with the skill icons is how clearly they represented what type of effect that they would end up being. Now for example, I have a long range character that has a skill with a couple of cross icons which clearly states that it's a healing effect. Or I have another character with sort of a swirling icon which represents her ability to spin around chainsawing enemies near her. It's a pretty simple system on the surface, but allows for some pretty incredible combos when you master each of the character's playstyles. Now talking about playstyles, this is another part of the game I feel the developers really nailed. Now one of the toughest things when it comes to making a mobile ARPG on a touch device is making the gameplay feel intuitive and responsive, and that also includes trying to make all of the different characters and their individual playstyles fun and engaging. Now each character I have played so far in the game have played very different from one another. For example, I have a chainsaw wielding character that focuses on close range AOE effects, a long range shooter who utilizes self healing skills, and I recently unlocked a new character who has a giant blade whose attacks are much slower but he relies on countering his enemies, knocking them back in order to get the upper hand in a fight. Now, every single character controls really, really well, and honestly, the one that really surprised me was my ranged character, because other games like this that I've played, the ranged characters feel really slow or clunky, but this one was actually a lot of fun and like a pretty explosive and engaging character to play. 
So the gameplay really is a lot of fun and it controls very well. Now, one of the things I have noticed playing the game is that the gameplay sessions are a bit on this shorter side, which can be a plus for some people that don't have like a whole lot of time in order to play the game. They can kind of hop in, finish a mission or two and feel like they're still progressing. Now, I'm sure as you progress farther into the game, there'll be longer and more difficult missions to encounter. But as of right now, a lot of the things have been on the more short and sweet side. The game does have a lot of content already. There's a main story mission, character side missions that teach you more in depth about their individual play styles. There's daily progression missions where you can obtain materials to grow your characters. And there's also these really massive in-game events, just like the current one that's running right now called The Fallen Star. Now this is the second major event the game has hosted since launch, introducing two new characters, new gears, some fun little mini games, and a bunch of free stuff to collect. Now character progression is straightforward as you can level up your heroes using experience items, though character levels cannot exceed your account level, so keep that in mind. You can also unlock more powerful weapons to equip with their own level and progression. There are character skill levels, passive skill levels, and a rank up system for each hero that unlocks higher ranks as you beat the main storyline. Okay, so now to end things off, I want to talk to you guys about the game's gotcha system because a lot of people may not really like it. Now, not only can you summon heroes, but it also combines card equipment and resources like experience items. So if you're going in wanting to collect a certain hero like I did, and which I'll have in the background playing for you guys, I only ended up getting one hero and then a bunch of other progression items and equipment systems that I could use for that character. Now, I know a lot of us may not enjoy, you know, those gotcha systems that combine equipment and characters together. But honestly, the game doesn't really have a whole lot of heroes compared to, say, a typical gotcha game. So the focus isn't really around trying to gotcha them all, but rather focusing on the characters you do have and improving their powers every single day. So honestly, I want to get your guys' thoughts on this down below. Do you think it's a good system? Do you not like it? Do you hate it? Do you love it? Yeah, let me know down below in the comments. <laughs> So those are my thoughts on Punishing Grey Raven, an amazing mobile ARPG that I have included into my daily games that I play simply just for fun. I'm excited to participate more in the current running event and hopefully be able to play an English version sometime in the future, though as far as I could tell through my research, there hasn't been any kind of an announcement for an English or a global version anytime soon. So we can basically just kind of cross our fingers and hope that the game comes out to the West or globally or in English sometime this year. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And again, if you did, a like would be super appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new here as well. Thanks, friends, and I'll see you next time.